video how to make a quick chat using PHP and MySQL as a database. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to open up MAMP. We're doing this as a local host. You all know how to do this. We've done it in class. So you start MAMP, open up the um, web page. MAMP comes up onto your screen and you go to PHP My Admin. Once you've gone, gone to PHP My Admin, you're going to create a new database. So you're going to click New in the top left hand corner over here. Once you've clicked that, I've already done it. I've made one called Simple Chat, capital S, capital C, um, camel case typing. That's just the way that I like to do it. So I've written Simple Chat, no spaces. I've then clicked New and created a new table within that database and I've called it Chat 1. Once I've done that, I've gone to the database and I have uh, chat one. I have created two columns. The first column is ID. I've made it integers and I've made it only one character. Second column is message varchar 255 characters. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that the ID integer one, I have not made it a primary key. I've just made it a column. So um, this is not a complex database. This is a really simple way to do a chat. So ID integer one, messages varchar 255. Then if we go to browse that, you can see there's an ID and there's a message and there's nothing in there. I'm going to go to insert and on the very first one I'm going to put the value of 1 for the ID and the messages I'm going to put no messages yet. Okay, so that's what I'm inserting. So I'm actually going to click go and insert that in there and in the ID section we'll get the value of 1, in messages we'll get the value of no messages yet. Hit go. And that says one row inserted. I can browse it and have a look at it and it says one, no messages yet. Okay, so I've set up the database side of it. That was pretty simple. Um, simple database, simple table, two rows, um, and well, two columns, one of them's ID, one of them's messages. That's simple. All right, let's get to the, um, the brackets side of it. So in my HT docs, which you know links to your MAMP folder, and that's where if I click my website, this is where all the information is. So in my HT docs folder, which should be on your desktop, I have three files here that we're going to use. This is last year's file, so then we've got three files here. We've got one called chat, one called page one, and one called page two. And we're going to look at how those three pages work. I'm going to go to brackets to do my editing. Let's start with the chat section. So I've created this document um, in brackets. Very, very simple document. All of you in class should be able to do this. It starts with, opens as an HTML document, has all of the normal things, sending messages, heading, titles, that sort of stuff. Two simple style sheets here. One of them is the input text area and one of them is the input submit button. So when we actually get to look at the page, this is the area where you type text. This is the area where the button actually clicks the button. Then I've made a form down the bottom down here. Um, the way we always do, we make a form. This simple form is one line of input, which is send user a message. We're calling it a text area, and the type is going to be called, and the name is going to be called input. Remember, that's the important part because we're going to send that by posting it, this method here, post, to the next PHP file. So the input is the key word. Submit button at the bottom. Now, on this page, I've also got the results of whatever the submit from whatever is submitted in an iframe. So an iframe is essentially just a box that appears on the screen. I've made the box 450 wide, 200 high, and yes, it can scroll up and down. So the iframe here is going to show all of the information that happens on page one. It's going to present it on the screen. Okay. So this is an input form, and this is essentially it's going to do a query on page one get that query and put the information back here on this first page. So this is our first chat page. This is the main page we're going to go to. Page one. Page one has all of the normal stuff that we've been doing in class. It logs onto the local host, both of your username and password, and the name of the database, simple chat. It checks for the connection. And then it says, select message from chat one. So it's saying, get whatever's in the message section from the chat table on the database that you called simple chat. Whatever you get from there, that's going to go back to this chat section down here and be presented in the iframe. Okay, so that's just doing a query and everything from there is going to go back to that other page. If nothing's there, it'll say no messages have been exchanged yet. So it may come up with a message saying nothing's there yet, so I can't present anything. Page two is where we actually have the chat working. Again, logs onto the database, except this time it takes the input statement here, which came from our chat one page, so whatever the user inputs, 
and it goes to the database and in this section in this example it updates chat one that's the name of the table um, the messages section that's the name of the column and it puts in whatever the person has written and it only works where the message ID was one which is why when we set up the database I made the ID number one so let's just have a quick look and see how this works let's go back to MAMP my website click on chat and there's that first message I wrote no messages yet blue box green button I can type something in here hello oops hello hit enter that will go into the database now if I go back to MAMP just to check that browse you'll see in message ID message one it says hello now if I go back and type something else all right um, hi and hit send in this situation it overwrites whoops I've written hi yep it overwrites what's there I'll refresh this page go to the chat browse the database it overwrites the hello and just puts in hi there and that's where on this file we're using an update function we're using an update to go over the top of what was already there and update it with the new information. So this way, if we have two windows open, for example, so I've got, I've got Safari open here, I'll open Chrome as well, and we had two people chatting, just copying the exact URL, putting it at the top, bang. Okay, so the first person writes, hello. Oops, click on the right screen. Hello, and hits enter. Right, so hello comes up on the screen. On the other chat with the other thing, this will refresh after 20 seconds and it should come up saying hello. Now, I'm not going to wait 20 seconds, I'm going to hit refresh. It says hello. So this person writes back, hi Nick, hit send. And then on the first person, first person's chat, it'll wait 20 seconds, it'll refresh. There you go, did it automatically. Hi Nick. So we've set up a, a simple chat system that goes back and forward, but it overwrites the information that was there in the past. So our database doesn't get bigger, our database stays the same size, and it's a perfectly working chat system. That's part one. Part two, what we could do, I'm just going to comment out this line here, and we change our SQL query, instead of it being an update, we change it to an insert. And now that it's an insert, what will happen is, it'll write lots and lots and lots and lots of different messages here, and you'll be able to see them. So let's go and do that test right now. All right, hi, John. And I, oops, I've got 20 seconds to do it or it refreshes. Hi, John, send. Okay, so I've sent that one and that's gone into the first place. Did I save that file? No, I didn't save. Let's do it again. Hi, John, enter. Right, so that's gone in. And you'll see now both messages there, two messages are there. If someone else puts another one in, hi, Peter, enter. Three messages there. So in this situation, if we go back to the database, look at the database, look at the browse this time it's not overriding it is updating and adding to it each time using this line of SQL the insert one the client ID doesn't matter we don't need a client ID using the first way we originally did it just take those two lines of code out it needs a client ID to see which one of these cells that it's going to pull the information from right all three of these files are on the classroom you can go and play with it, try it. If you've got questions, come and ask me. I've commented in through all of the documents, so you should know how each section works. We've done this in class. This is just a quick overview of how to do the chat messaging system.